Cheon's life was changed forever when she thought she was doing the right thing. A restaurant cook in Cambodia, she threatened to report her brother-in-law to police for selling his two-year-old daughter to human traffickers. In response, he attacked her with acid. I felt bad for my niece who was sold by her dad. That's why I phoned him and asked him, why did you sell your own child? You have to bring her back to your wife or I'll report you to the police. After a week, I saw that he had a new motorbike, a Honda Dream. Cheon ended up here, a shelter run by the Cambodian Acid Survivors Charity. It's a partner organization to Acid Survivors Trust International, an organization funded by the UN Trust Fund and Violence Against Women, which works to help victims of acid attacks, mobilizes communities to prevent attacks, and pushes for stronger laws and enforcement against their perpetrators. Dr. Horng Lai Rapau is the Center for Acid Survivors' chief medical officer and its legal officer, whose work takes him from the courthouse to the operating room. Most people who carry out acid attacks go free, he says, so there's little deterrent to others. On the acid law also, that means to uh, punishment on the perpetrator, that means stop them not to use acid at the white part. Worldwide, around 80% of acid burn violence victims are women. Most acid attacks are perpetrated by men, however, women also attack other women, often as a result of love triangles, either real or imagined. Bopa is a wedding singer who often socialized with a group of friends from work. The wife of one friend, she says, grew jealous of her for no reason and threw acid on her face. My face is very important to me. I used my face to support myself. When I lost it, I lost everything. The reason I've not thought about suicide is my daughter. She's the most important thing in my life. The commune setting of the Center for Acid Survivors also fosters a sense of community among acid attack victims and a growing will to pursue justice. Dr. Lai Rapau helps survivors like Cheon to negotiate Cambodia's legal system. Today, she came along to court to observe Dr. Lai Rapau work on another case to help her prepare for her own efforts to have her brother-in-law charged with a crime. New legislation, once passed, would make it illegal to sell acid, and perpetrators of acid attacks could face life in prison, a law that Cheon says, had it existed, would have changed the mind of her attacker. He would have probably been scared and wouldn't carry out an attack because he'd be afraid to be sent to prison. So if the law had been there before I was attacked, I firmly believe that he would not have dared to do that. The UN Trust Fund supports partner groups not just in Cambodia, but also in Uganda and Nepal, reaching 2,000 women. It's through the empowerment of groups like the Center for Acid Survivors and rights workers like Dr. Lai Rapo that the Trust Fund believes the crime of acid attacks can be fought and won.